In this video, I'll take you through my logo design process from start to finish, and we'll build a brand for my new business, Rebox. We'll design the logo and the packaging, and I'll take you along the whole journey step by step. The first thing we need to do is to design a brand brief. And this means looking at the competition and the landscape, building a competitor matrix, and then writing a brief to ourselves that enables us to distill the key things that we want to get out. There's four key elements to the brand brief. The first is the goals. So in this case, the goals are we want to create an iconic brand with a premium feel that communicates the core values and the purpose of the business. The branding is to have a wide appeal, indexing more towards a younger demographic, but with the sharpness of something premium and fitting to a millennial and parent audience. The demographics. So we already highlighted our two key demographics with this brief. It is a millennial parent, possibly 30 to 40 years old. It is a Gen Z, 18 to 25 year old person. So we've got quite a job here to create something that sits in the middle of both of them as those are the two target demographics of the business. The brand values, what are the key values we're holding as a brand? The values we want our logo and design system to echo our trust, reliability, eco-consciousness, and have a rebellious spirit. And lastly, our brand DNA is 100% premium, 100% gender neutral, it is 70% minimal, 50% eco, and 60% sophisticated. So those things together are gonna give us the foundation of what it is we're gonna actually design. So in this exercise, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down some of our main competitors onto an axis just to see where we feel like we can position our logo against the rest. This area down here, the complex and icon space, this is somewhere where we don't really wanna be playing. I don't want anything complex because it will mean it's not memorable. It won't be easy to redraw, which is one of my key principles. So this is the, uh, the territory we're looking at living in up here. So now we've distilled the brand brief and had a look at the market, we're gonna jump in and start sketching. Typically, I try and find a lot of meaning in my logos. I'm not the biggest fan of things that don't actually convey any of the values or anything to do with the brand itself. So my number one objective here is trying to find a route through this, whether it's the R for reboxed or whether it's a combination of the words that we've pulled together, the circularity, the sustainability. I wanna be able to create a logo that stands out on its own without the word. And to do that, we need to have some sort of nod, I believe, to what it is that the business is trying to do. Spending a few hours sketching, I think I've really got a solid concept together. The idea of a box netting, a love heart, and an arrow for circularity. Together, those things are gonna make a really striking icon. I think we can just jump into Illustrator, build the icon, and then we can work the font around it. So I've pulled the sketch into Illustrator. I've had the first stab at building the logo using my grid system and shape builder method. However, the first version didn't work out quite well. I didn't have the grid right. So the middle bit of the heart really just isn't sitting right in my grid system. I'm gonna take another stab at this and then let's see where we get to. So this is the final logo. You can see how geometrically sound it looks. If I turn on the grid lines, this is the basic grid that we built with the circles that intersect to make up the shape. So yeah, super happy with how this is looking. It's um, worked out really well. So having mastered getting the actual icon done, the next bit of work to do was to 
build the font system around it. I tried a bunch of different fonts and I actually wanted to really do something a bit edgier and a bit more youthful going back to the brand values chart but I think I've come to the conclusion that it doesn't actually work as a whole piece. It's probably too difficult to understand. I don't think the E's work that well. I've tried a bunch of other fonts and I've even looked at different ways of, you know, making this unique. So does it work without the icon? Can the icon be embedded in the word? Which this is the closest thing I've got. I'm really not feeling this X and in fact the font's not working. So I've just done another piece of work. I think I've found the font that complements the logo the best. However, it needs a little bit of refining here. So I'm gonna go with the lowercase for the actual main font. We have the final lockup of the logo. I've gone with a, a two-part system. We have the word mark isolated and we have a vertical version and then we can also use the icon on its own. The font was something that I spent quite a bit of time on working on the tracking and we've actually customized a lot of the letters in here. Now we're gonna dive into looking at colors and how this whole thing is gonna to come together. So when it comes to branding, one of the most important elements is the colour and the overall visual aesthetic. See, diving into this project, I already had an idea of what I wanted our main colour to be. At Apple, the first ever iPhone project was codenamed Project Purple, and it was rumoured to be Steve Jobs' favourite colour. See, I love the colour purple. Not only is it both striking, it gives off a regal and premium feel. And having looked at all of the competition in our marketplace, no one has actually touched this colour at all. They've all gone through the typical greens, blues, basically anything that you would imagine to be with a kind of trust and eco. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna maybe make a nod to that, but we wanna create something that's completely our own so it stands out in this space. And purple for me feels like the perfect color and a nice cheeky nod back to the legend that is Steve Jobs too. So let's go into Adobe color. So we want actually, we want something that's a striking purple, but maybe not too much on the feminine inside so I think we've got one around here slightly a bit more bluey um, I want the blue I want the blueiness of the purple and the green to work together almost like a planet so the green being the islands the purpley blue feeling like the water so I think we've got something here we've got a nice little system and because of this magical little tool um, I'm using the triad color system here and because of this magical tool it's given me the right green and the right um, tertiary color orange to use, which I'm super happy about. So this is the color set that we're gonna go with now. So with a little bit of refinement, we've come up with the color system and now I'm pretty confident we've got exactly what we need. Um, I've done a bit of a lean skinny branding. I know what my secondary and tertiary fonts are. So I've made a couple of creative decisions early on. We're gonna roll with the primary logo font for most of our key font system such as the body the body copy and the headings and when it comes to campaign design and graphics we're going to use something slightly more bold and slightly more aggressive which nods back to our rebellious spirit in our brand values and because we're a tech business and we're all about trust i've used a tertiary font which is a more digital looking scientific font which gives us our kind of high tech appeal for our secondary brand which is going to be tech check so we've been working on what our packaging needs to look and feel like and how our brand is going to be applied to it we've designed a few boxes in 3d to give us a general feeling of how our brand is going to come together and make us feel when we unbox our product now we're going to dive into the die lines and actually finish the final print ready designs ready to get off to print for the boxes. The delivery is the final stage in our branding process. We are going to produce our brand guideline document which lays out how our brand should be used, how it looks and feels and this is bolted in with the initial brand strategy that we did before we went into the design process and then we are going to look at the application so give an idea of what this brand is going to look and feel like in the wild. We're going to mock up some tote bags, we're going to put it on some posters out of home and we're going to bring this whole thing to life.
So this logo turned out really well. And if you want to know why, you better click this video right here for the six secret hidden qualities of great logos.